Hello and welcome to In the Crease with Carl Mogline. I'm your host. And uh, here at uh, In the Crease with Carl Mogline, as well as on National Sports, the National Sports Network, we like to stay on to our social media. So to find me personally in my show, I am on Twitter at Carl underscore PM. At Carl underscore PM. I am uh, I also have a page on Facebook, In the Crease with Carl Mogline. Just search it in and you should be able to find it. Here at National Sports, we have a Twitter page, at National Sports One. Come and follow us, follow when our shows are, and get up to the updates. Of course, like us on Spreaker as you're listening, and uh, if you like us, tell your friends about us. Uh, we also have our website. It's suddenimpact14.wix.com slash national sports. suddenimpact14.wix.com slash national sports, spelled as it sounds. And then we're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash online sports radio. You can also search us in your search bar. Big news in the hockey world today as Lindy Ruff, who the Buffalo Sabres coach, has been fired. He was the longest tenured coach in the NHL. 16 years he's been coaching on the Sabres since the 97 season. That was his first coaching job, and he, and he has had a quite a extraordinary career. He's played over a thousand games and has 571 wins. He he has <clears throat> excuse me 559 point percentage. Basically of the points possible he has over half. So you know he's doing pretty well. He's had eight playoff berths in his tenure but and 57 playoff wins with one cuff Cup final, but this year Edmonton has been shaky. They are six, one, and ten, thirteen points, and they're last in their division, and they are third to last in the East. They just have not been cutting it, and a team that has often been known for being very clingy to the coach. I mean, Lindy Ruff has gone through many hard seasons. He has really been. It finally was time for him to go after such a slow start, and in this short of a season, they got to get it back around. Soon enough, Ron Ralston has been named the interim coach. He was the coach of the Buffalo Sabres AHL team in Rochester. The AHL is the NHL's minor league system, and uh, it was finally time for him to get a promotion. It was either him or one of the assistant coaches on the team that was most likely going to get the interim job, but there's a good chance that the Sabres will look elsewhere either during the season or they may wait to the off season to look for their head coach. All right, we'll be right back, but when we do get back, we'll talk about what's happened the last couple of weeks. First show in a couple of weeks and well, it's the NHL. Stuff is always happening. Stay with us in the crease with Carl Mogline, Spreaker National Sports Network. Hello, welcome back live to in the crease with Carl Mogline. The NHL season is now a third of the way through, and uh, it's been an interesting season. Big news with the Chicago Blackhawks and their great start, and also some teams surprising, some teams surprising in the wrong ways. There are currently, there are not many people who have not scored in the NHL who have, who have been shooting a lot. I took the top five players who, sh by shots on goal, who have not scored yet. And I decided I showed them you. Three of them are defensemen, which is not surprising, but still, these guys have been shooting a lot, and it's amazing they haven't scored yet. Mike Koska, he's a defenseman in Detroit. I mean, in Toronto, excuse me. Toronto is having a good season, but he is not. He's had 31 shots and hasn't had a single puck go in. Really hurts this. It's really hard not to score after shooting that much for a player, and it's Confidence cannot be high. Hopefully for Toronto, he scores one soon so we can get back. Because it's, it's really bad on the ego. Um, Alec Goligoski, he's a defenseman in Dallas. He's had 32 shots. But he still hasn't gotten to light the lamp yet. Drew Doughty in L.A. Of course, L.A. has had a season that hasn't been scoring quite as much. But um, he still should have a goal by now. He was pretty high scoring last year. And 32 shots is too many without a goal. Drayson Bowman, he's a left winger for Carolina. He's had 33 shots 
And uh, for a forward to have 33 shots and not score, that is really hard. But this is the most surprising one of all. Ryan Klo, who has had multiple 20-goal seasons, has having an awful season, no goals on 34 shots. This is a Sharks team's offense that's sputtering, and Ryan Klo never seems to get started. All right, now we're going to talk about the opposite side of the spectrum. People who have scored the most goals on the fewest shots, people with the best shot percentages that had at least about 25 shots. It is a good list. You look at the teams of these players, and it really shows which teams have been hot. Patrick Berglund, he's a center out in St. Louis. He leads the pack of this with this stat. He has 34 shots, and he scored nine goals. That's He's scoring over a quarter of the time, 26.5%. Martin Hansel, he has seven goals on 27 shots, also over a quarter of his goals, 25.9%. Andrew Ladd is a winger out in Winnipeg. Winnipeg has not been doing great lately, but he has eight goals, 34 shots. Good year for him so far. James Neal, he's got the most go shots on this list. He has 54 shots, but he has 12 goals to back it up. He's shooting the puck a lot, and it's also going a lot in the back of the net, so I see no problem with it. A Alice Hemsky, he's an Edmonton right winger. Seven goals, 31 shots. Respectable. He is not having a huge season, but he is getting the puck in the back of the net when he does shoot, taking shots that are good. Of course, as Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And uh, if you're the guys on the previous list, you miss 100% of the shots you do take, too. All right, Patrick Kane, he's the Chicago star, of, and he is the U.S. boy. He has had nine goals this season on 42 shots. He is shooting 21.4%. That is an incredible high rate for that many goals, as well as everybody on this list to have this many goals for that many shots. Very, very unusual to have that high of a ratio. All right, we're going to come right back. We're going to look at the scoreboard of the NHL season so far. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box. I will be happy to, to answer them. Also, if you have any questions about the show, go to our page in the crease with Carl Mogollion on Facebook and ask the questions on our wall. I will be happy to answer them during the show. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to In the Crease with Carl Mobline. We are going to look at the NHL scoreboard so far today on this Thursday afternoon. Of course, remember we will be here every Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. Please, if you like us, tell your friends. I love the listeners. Our whole network loves the listeners. And please tune into one of our other many great shows, including... The Hardwood with Cameron Sadeghi, The Deets, and Deets Sports Talk. Those two shows are two of my favorites. All right. Now we look at the NHL scoreboard today. Buffalo and Toronto are deadlocked at one. This is the first game that Buffalo is going to have its new head coach, interim head coach. That is a big game for them, and it's tied there in the second period. Also in the second period, Florida is putting a whooping on Philadelphia, up 3-0. That is big for them. Scoreless out in Washington, New Jersey and Washington. Neither has lit the lamp. That's also in the second period. Staying in the second period, because we just love that here at In the Crease. <clears throat> Winnipeg and Carolina are tied at one. In And now we get to go to the first period. What a period, isn't it? Yeah, such a great period. The first. It's first. First is the worst, second is the best. Third is the one with the treasure chest. And what is OT? We're not sure. All right, so nearing the end of the first in that one, New York Rangers, they're losing by one to the Ottawa Senators. Boston's up 2-1 over Tampa. That game is very close to ending the first period. And also near the end of the first period, Detroit is beating the very bad St. Louis Blue Jackets 2-1. to one. And, of course, later tonight, Vancouver is going to take on Dallas, and Minnesota is going to take on Edmonton in a Northwest Division showdown against teams that have ver been very... have not lived up to their expectations. Remember, if you like the show, follow me at Carl underscore PM on Twitter, or follow us on Facebook. Also, 
You can find National Sports on Twitter at National Sports One and on Facebook, Facebook.com slash online sports radio, or just search National Sports. Thank you for listening. We will be right back after this short commercial break. Hello, welcome back to In the Crease. I am still Carl Mogline, and we are still looking at the NHL season. The NHL in the last bit, and uh, we're going to do my favorite segment, Hot, Not, and Just Plain Surprising. As we look at the NHL third of the way through the seasons, what teams in each division have been doing things that have been very good and very bad and just plain strange? All right, you look at... In, we're going to start up in the Eastern Conference in the Atlantic Division. We are now a third of the way through the season, which means these teams are really showing us who they truly are. The New York Islanders are showing us they are not a good team. They are 12th in the East with only 13 points, and they are 3-7 and seven in the last 10 games. That is not a good mark at all. They will want to raise that if they want to go anywhere this season which I do not see them going anywhere. They started out good, they have not been good since, and they look like they are going to end up going down, 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 down. All right, New Jersey is 9-4-3. and three. They have 22 points, and they are second in the East. This is kind of the opposite of New York, and they are right across the bridge. They are doing having a great season, and Martin Brodeur in net, he's over 40. I do not know his exact age. He's the NHL leader in many stats, including wins and shutouts. Future Hall of Famer and leading that team right now to victory. And it looks like he's actually going to make an attempt to go to the Sochi Games next year in 2014 for Team Canada. If he keeps playing like this, I don't see how they're going to keep him off that team. And we're going to go back down to the best division in the Northeast in the Eastern Conference in the Northeastern Division. Montreal has just surged up this right now. They are 11, 1, and 4. That is one overtime loss and four regulation losses, and they have 23 points. Uh, the one thing to mention is they do have three more, three games more than the Boston Bruins, who are only a point behind. So those teams could be trading places pretty soon. Also in that division, Ottawa has been less than stellar, 4, 1, and 5 in the last. 10 games. They started out great, but they have slowed down. They only have 20 points, and they are 7th in the East. Craig Anderson, currently he, he's been a different goalie, but still a great goalie from January to February. January, he was one of the most stunning goalies I've ever seen. Only a goals against one goal against, goal against average. Slightly lower than that because of a couple OT sessions, but mainly you could say that he was one, but now in February he is a two goals against average which is just not the same, but it's still a great thing. This, The reason this team has been losing is because they just can't get pucks in the back of the net. Uh, Craig Anderson has been showing great, sh been great, except for a couple goal games where he did let in three uh, goals, which was not his best game, but he's made up with it with shutouts and one-goal games, keeping his team in the playoff picture right now. Fi finishing out the East, we are going to go down to the Southeast Division. Winnipeg, a team in Canada, is playing in the Southeast Division, and, well, they're playing like they have road legs because they should. They have the most travel of any team in the NHL right now because their division is a whole country away, basically. They are 3-7 and seven in their last 10, only have 13 points, and they're 11th in the East. This team was a team that I really had backed and thought could do well, but they just haven't been. The division overall has just been a stinker. Carolina... Carolina, who leads this division, is, is, um, and Tampa also lead this division. They're tied. They would be, t if those teams, if there was no automatic qualifying for a division champion, those teams would both be tied for eighth with a few other teams. This division is so bad that they might not, e they probably wouldn't get, they may get one team in the playoffs, even if there was no. Excuse me, they would get maybe no teams in the playoffs if there was no automatic division entrance, which means that it's pretty big, that automatic entrance. And uh, something I really think is that they should go to a system near that to the 
NBA where the team can get fourth and slip down. So they always keep home court advantage, but they are not the third seed. And they can, in the fourth seed, of course, plays the fifth seed, which is often a much harder series. All right, we are going to take a quick break, but stay with us on In the Crease on the National Sports Network, Spreaker.com. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to In the Crease. I am Carl Mobline, your host every week here, Thursday at 5, Spreaker.com, the National Sports Network. We are a group of students who are really striving to have a career someday in the broadcast business, and this is a great way to show everybody our skills and how we can do all we want because, and we are pushing ourselves here. So we appreciate your listening, and if you have, if you like our show, please share it on Facebook, tweet it, share it on any social media sites. Tell your friends, call your friends, text your friends. I really don't care how you how your friends get word of it. Just sh- make sure if you like this show that other people get the chance to like this show too, because we really feel like we are putting out something that really deserves to be watched. All right, currently looking at the NHL scoreboard. Montreal put another goal onto, New- onto their lead against New York. They're up 2-1. Of course, I've talked about that New York team really, really struggling. On the scoreboard right now, there has been very little change. And uh, that is very not surprising. But um, big deal down in Anaheim, breaking news. The Ducks have have signed Victor Fafts to a two-year, $5.8 million contract extension. He has started his first NHL season 8 and 0 and 0. He has not lost a game since he's entered the NHL and he's a Finnish di- piece of dynamite. He got signed this year and uh it's paying out in dividends. This is incredible for somebody who's being pl- paid less than a million a year now with that huge contract extension. The Ducks really wanted to sign this kid and um We'll see how he turns out, but that is a big, big news out in Anaheim. All right, stay with us. When we get back, we are going to preview the Western Conference teams in the NHL. Please stay tuned. Thank you.